Chad Klassen joins us now with a look at sports. What do you got on today? Kamloops Heat, uh, men's soccer team, they were in action uh, over the weekend, both uh, Saturday and Sunday. Yesterday, a, a big game for them. Basically a winner-take-all. All right. Uh, if they win, if they won or got a draw, they'd be in the playoffs. Okay. Uh, so we'll find out uh, highlights from there. Uh, also got uh, Kamloops Venom. They started the uh, Thompson Okanagan um, Junior Lacrosse final yesterday in Vernon. Uh, and the BC Lions, big win in Edmonton. Yes, um, I saw that. In unfavorable conditions. I know. So uh, we'll show you that. That's uh, all easy. coming up in sports. Sports is brought to you by Zimmer Collision. All makes, all models, ICBC accredited, Glass Express. Come on down and check us out. The Kamloops Heat have enjoyed a terrific first season in the men's premier division in the Pacific Coast Soccer League. A last-minute entry into the league, the Heat, as the only interior team, have shown they can compete with the best from the lower mainland. The only thing missing from the resume this year, a spot in the postseason. The Heat hammered Victoria, the Victoria Highlanders 6-2 on Saturday, setting up a winner-take-all game on Sunday. The Heat needing a winner draw against Vancouver for that third and final playoff spot. Pick it up in the right, second man. half. Justin Wallace beats his man but puts the shot wide. It's Vancouver who opens the scoring though. Reynolds Stewart streaking down the right side. The shot gets through the screen and it's 1-0 Thunderbirds on the road. Then Oriel Torres ties it. Chips it over the keeper and it just trickles across the line. We're back to square one, tied at one. Kamloops then just about takes the lead. The ball gets through to Adam Dodgson who gets in close. His first shot is blocked but he gets it right back but boots it high, still 1-1. Vancouver then with their chance to go ahead, Naveed Manshinshi with a nice ball across, but it goes high as well. But the Thunderbirds do get that 2-1 goal. Manshinshi's shot beats Alan Connor. Vancouver has the advantage going into the final stages. Kamloops needing at least a draw, pressing for the tying goal. Justin Wallace feeds Torres, who's swarmed by the Thunderbirds. Great D, 2-1 Vancouver in the 85th minute. The visitors then get some insurance shortly after. The throw-in gets deflected on the way in. 3-1 Vancouver. Time is now the Heat's mortal enemy. But Kamloops doesn't quit. A minute later, Justin Wallace scoots past a wall of defenders. Great little move here to freeze the D. He slips it in. 3-2 going into extra time. Four minutes added to the clock. The Heat get a corner kick. Last chance to tie it. Stefan Shaw gets a shot at the ball, but Vancouver clears it away. The Thunderbirds win it 3-2 over Kamloops to clinch their playoff spot while putting the Heat season on life support. We needed to win um, or draw. Um, I think we had the game under control and we just, you know, it's all about a learning process. Guys got to keep learning, you know, day in, day out. And you hope that they learn from this situation to help them in another situation. Um, you know, that team there is quality. They're defending national CIS champs. Um, so they, you know, they've got a good program. They, they know how to play the game and they, they did what they had to to win today. Uh, pretty down right now. Um, I thought we played well, but we didn't get a few bounces, and uh, I'm just I'm pretty pissed off right now. Um, we're a little disappointed. Um, I mean, we were in the game pretty much the entire game, played really good first half, and just a couple of mental lapses in the second half that uh, ended up costing us. Um, but I think overall we had a really good season. Um, came together as a team, and I think we, we showed uh, the coastal teams that um, the interior has some good players. The Heat currently sit in that third and final playoff position, one ahead of Bellingham, but Bellingham does have that one game in hand. They play last place Victoria at home this Sunday. Kamloops needs Victoria to pull off a major upset to sneak in the playoffs, an unlikely scenario. So it looks like the Heat's first season in the Premier League is over. The Kamloops Venom went into the Thompson Okanagan Junior Lacrosse Final against the Vernon Tigers riding a high. The Venom upset the number one team, the Kelowna Raiders, and they were looking to keep that role going into game one. But the Venom dropped the opener 9-6 last night in Vernon. They actually outshot the Tigers 52-38, but Vernon netminder Joel Francilla was terrific, stopping 46 of the 52 shots that came his way. Kamloops trailed 3-2 after one, coughed up four in the second period. They actually pulled within two with just over a minute to play, but the Tigers hold on to win at 9-6 and take a 1-0 series lead. Game two of this best of five series goes tomorrow night at Memorial Arena. Game time is 7.30.
Meantime, the senior Rattlers begin their Thompson Okanagan senior lacrosse final against the Kelowna Raiders on Wednesday night with game one of the best of three series starting here in Kamloops. The Rattlers took four out of the five meetings against Kelowna during the regular season. The BC Lions are back at practice today after Saturday's win in Edmonton, helping them keep pace with, pace with both Saskatchewan and Calgary in the West. The Lions sit tied for second with the Stamps at 2-1 and one after the victory, although Mother Nature did her best to cause ha havoc. Both teams and the fans dealing with a torrential downpour in Edmonton, meaning you have to be able to run the ball. Travis, Travis Lule had a productive day on the ground, picks up the Leos first down here. Travis Lule ran for 82 yards on the rain-soaked Commonwealth Stadium turf. It was 3-1 Edmonton at the half, but Lule gets it going through the air. Here he finds Emmanuel Arsenal in the corner of the end zone. Arsenal with, a, with great concentration, hauls it in here, gets both feet in bounds nicely. 8-3 Lions. Then Lule goes to the reliable Andrew Harris, who breaks two tackles on contact, just bowls them over, walks into the end zone. BC takes it 17 to three, they'll face Edmonton in a rematch Saturday night at BC Place. We're three days before the British Open at Mirfield, and while Tiger Woods is favored once again, Phil Mickelson comes into the third major of the year on a high after this weekend's result, winning the Scottish Open yesterday, his first ever win in Europe. After three solid rounds, the wheels start to come off for Mickelson on the first hole. He botches this putt for bogey and has to settle for a double bogey. He bogeyed again on the third hole. Now to the fourth as Mickelson sinks a long birdie putt with ease, again showing his dual nature by making a flurry of birdie putts, seven total for the round and putting himself into first place by the last hole. Then Mickelson bogey putt just brushes the lip of the hole at 18. He had the tournament in the bag but has to settle for the double bogey and settle for a playoff with Brandon Grace. But once again, Mickelson pulls out a bit of magic, chipping the ball brilliantly to set up a tap in birdie on the first playoff hole. Grace did not have a chance. Mickelson wins the Scottish Open in dramatic fashion with his family right there ready to celebrate him with him in the end. He's waited a long time for this one on one of his favorite courses. The odds makers have Mickelson third in line to win the Claret Jug after his win at the Scottish Open. Tiger Woods is once again the clear favorite to win the 2013 British Open coming up with 8 to 1 odds. Tiger still on the hunt for his first major since the 2008 US Open. This year's US Open winner Justin Rose is next in line with 16 to 1 odds. Masters champion Adam Scott has 20 to 1 odds. Scott finished second in the British Open last year and defending champion Ernie Els is on the fringe at 28 to 1. Over to baseball, the Home Run Derby is underway at City Field in New York. No Toronto Blue Jays in the contest this year. The field features Baltimore Orioles slugger Chris Davis who leads the majors with 37 home runs at the All-Star break. He'll be up against the likes of Prince Fielder from the Detroit Tigers, Washington Nationals youngster Bryce Harper and the fan favorite in New York, David Wright. But just a little humor for you. We're going to take you back to Tampa Bay from Saturday afternoon. The Rays welcoming Canadian pop star Carly Rae Jepsen to throw out the first piss, pitch. And as you can guess, the result was less than ideal. Saw her warming up. And I, I, listen, this is all I'm going to tell you is you're going to, you're going to have to go back. She gives it a great effort here. But you're going to have to go back to 2009. The official, the belt holder for the worst ever first pitch of a ball game was Baba Bowie. Yeah, don't think the Rays will be calling Jepsen back to throw the pit, first pitch uh, anytime soon. Jepsen, Jepsen spiked it right in, in front of the mound prior to the race Houston Astros game. Just terrible. I'd, I'd say stick to singing, Carly. Wow. Still this many supporters for him here. Thank you for tonight, folks. You've been wonderful. Thanks so very much. What a beautiful, beautiful place to be.
to show that look. Chad, you were there. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Good crowd. Awesome concert. That's all I can say. Good. It was a, a treat to be there. We were chair dancing. Yes, we were. We were grooving <laughs> in the middle of that. <laughs> That's our time for tonight. I'll be back at 6.30. See you then. Good night. Good night. Good night.